Ipswich has had a reputation for being very fragmented um, when it comes to the arts. People in the past haven't worked together and um, therefore they've never been able to really mount a case for what they need. What we've lacked in the arts community, and I'll include the performing arts as part of that most assuredly, is any real focus, any focal point. We are a very much splintered group around here. Visual artists do their thing, creative artists do their thing, performing artists definitely do their own thing, and even within performing arts don't really do too much with each other. The project um, for me that I've started now is uh, really to sustain, develop and sustain the arts community here in Ipswich. And so we're trying to find a central hub where all the arts can come together and uh, share information and to have an administrator there to make sure it's done in a very professional and fair way. So nobody owns it, it's the whole of the city that can share. For a long time now I have been advocating for children to have a space to create and make art. Um, and I guess there are there's dovetailing there with um, the priorities of the Arts Corps. I suppose in a great many respects we're organising as a, a local organising body for the first time, or at least trying to, and with the impetus from the recovery project from the floods, uh, well it's, it's been a, the, the transport or the means by which we came together. Well, I think in terms of new spaces, there's opportunities everywhere and I think artists need to step out of you know, that box that they're in thinking that they have to have a building or a particular place to do this. You can basically find spaces anywhere, but you, know, you have to be um, a bit more open in what you see art spaces are. So we're in the Old Baptist Church, um, I'm the artistic director of that production company and we're presenting Philip Ridley's The Fastest Clock in the Universe. It'll be the first production to be in the space since it's been renovated um, to be a performance space. Um, it's really exciting that um, a venue um, or a space like this that has such um, history in the Ipswich community is now being reactivated as a theatre or an art space um, so that we're able to maintain some of the heritage of the city while finding new uses for our abandoned and, and ageing spaces and we'll be able to fill them um, with um, a lot of vibrancy and make them engaging for the community. I feel because we've had Scotia there and she's a professional arts administrator, we've made giant strides and now we have got ourselves marshalled into position where we can speak with one voice, we've got a Facebook site, we've got regular meetings going, we've certainly networked far beyond what we used to. We need proper partnerships with government, we need to really develop that here, you know, to make the funding, limited funding, whatever it is, more effective. My hope is that the Ipswich Arts Corps becomes that central focus, that it becomes the platform by which we then not only get a political voice, and a community voice, and a social voice, and an activity voice, uh, and some ability to influence media, but perhaps raising very much with government the idea that arts is part of the recovery, and I guess that's why the recovery project exists. It's about empowering the group through collaboration. I think of the good fight that I fight for children. I can't do it on my own. I need to collaborate and use that collective and the resource of the collective to energise, keep going, um, connect, support, um, through the group because you, you can't achieve that bigger goal on your own. It's, it's a team, team game. The influence that the arts community can provide in rebuilding morale, rebuilding community spirit and activity and getting us back to normal life as fast as possible is just as important as fixing bridges and roads. Mm -hmm.